The main event of WrestleMania is almost inarguably the most important wrestling match of the year, bar none. It is the biggest show the sport offers, and the final spot is meant to be the most anticipated bout on any given card. As such, the matches I'm going to briefly talk about here today are some of the very finest in the history of the show. If you go on to enjoy the video, be sure to give it a like as well as subscribe for more wrestling content like this in the future. Also, let me know what your favorite main event is in the comments down below. All that said, let's get to talking about the best WrestleMania main events ever. Hulk Hogan vs. Andre the Giant, WrestleMania 3 now, I reckon some people might groan a little bit at this match being in this video, but the reason for its inclusion is simple. This match's significance is something undeniably timeless for one moment in particular, the slam. This single slam is the benchmark and idea applied to a myriad of Dave vs. Goliath encounters. That idea of try, try, try again was something that resonated in the Pontiac Silverdome that night at WrestleMania 3. And when Hogan finally hoisted Andre up for the big slam, the place came unglued and the rest was history. There's a reason why the slam is used as part of the start of show bumper for every single piece of WWE programming. And while one could definitely say that the match is underwhelming by today's standards, it laid the groundwork for timeless moments to come. And for that, this main event match absolutely has to be in the conversation for the best ever. Speaking of the best... Bret Hart vs. Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania 12 Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart have influenced the modern generation of wrestlers in ways hard to ignore, and their 60-minute Iron Man match at WrestleMania 12 is a leading reason why. I mean, look at Logan Paul parroting Shawn's entrance from that mania. What's more impressive than that entrance, though, is the pair's ability to keep people focused throughout the bout, as in today's day and age, it's hard enough to keep people focused on something for more than 10 minutes, let alone a whole hour. Even still, this match in the main event slot managed to not only keep people invested for the full hour, but even a little bit more as the pair shared an additional minute and 52 second overtime. This match showcased the full technical excellence of both participants with the first 40 minutes or so being relatively tame, before the final third of the match both parties began to fire on all cylinders. The end came in the aforementioned overtime after Michaels managed to hit not one, but two sweet chin musics, thus capturing the WWF World Heavyweight Championship for the very first time. Brock Lesnar vs. Kurt Angle, WrestleMania 19 With the Attitude Era coming to a close and stars like The Rock and Steve Austin looking to take more time off, WWE was in need of a new big thing to come along. And, well, that came in the form of a genetic anomaly known as Brock Lesnar. The Beast Incarnate in the early days of the company was treated as a monster from the get-go, as from day one it seemed like they simply wanted to strap the rocket to him and see how far he'd fly. With him winning matches against Hollywood Hulk Hogan as well as The Rock to win his first WWE title, it seemed like headed into WrestleMania he was going to take that top prize again. However, his dance partner in this encounter was none other than Kurt Angle, who by all rights might be the single greatest professional wrestler ever. The pair put on a stellar performance which was an utter hoss fight complete with F5s and angle slams, as well as some great amateur style wrestling put in for good measure. However, the finish of the match was set to see Lesnar hit a top rope shooting star press on angle, as he had done this several times previously in OVW. But this time around, he under rotated and landed squarely on his head and neck. Fortunately, the pair were able to improvise the finish, which saw a somewhat dazed Lesnar hit an F5 for the third time on angle to pick up his second WWE Championship. Cody Rhodes vs. Roman Reigns, WrestleMania 39, Night 2 Does this match make it on here for sake of potential recency bias and my personal affinity for Cody Rhodes? Maybe, but even still, I am of the belief that Roman Reigns vs. Cody Rhodes at WrestleMania 39 for the WWE Universal Championship is one of the very best matches and programs in WrestleMania history. Cody Rhodes as a fiery babyface who had the simple story of capturing the greatest prize in wrestling history for the sake of himself and his father who had the very same title ripped out of his hands, and Roman Reigns, the end boss, the undefeated, untouchable, best version of himself that we've ever seen. These two were nearly destined to make magic here, between the promos leading up to the event, to the entrances, to the match itself, it was a perfect opening act to what would nowadays become an even bigger and grander story. Also, I might have shed a few tears after Cody lost, sue me. Daniel Bryan vs. Batista vs. Randy Orton, WrestleMania 30 Speaking of tears, let's talk about some happy ones. Daniel Bryan vs. Batista vs. Randy Orton isn't a match most will remember for its technical excellence or for its long-standing storytelling. Rather, it is and likely will be remembered for it being the first time that we as fans got our guy to not only compete for, but win the big one at Mania. 
Leading into the Royal Rumble pay-per-view, the fans wanted to see one man win, and nobody else on the roster would do. That man, of course, being Daniel Bryan. They wanted him to win the Rumble match so much so that no matter who came out at number 30, if they weren't Daniel Bryan, they were getting booed out the building. And of course, whoever ended up winning the thing was bound to get similar treatment, even when it was a returning Dave Batista. From here, the rest is really simple. People made their voices heard, the Yes Movement took over, Daniel Bryan beat Triple H to be inserted into the main event between Randy and Dave, and ultimately walked out of New Orleans as the undisputed WWE Champion. The Rock vs Stone Cold Steve Austin, WrestleMania X7 Now, we're getting into a classic here, and out of their three WrestleMania encounters, I'm of the belief that their match at WrestleMania X7 is the finest among them. Right out the gates, the match showcases the blood level feud the two have gotten to, with Austin going right after Rock, as well as commentary seemingly being confused after the match was announced as a no disqualification, despite it being advertised as a normal singles match leading up to the event. The reason for this would be revealed later on. The match itself was brutal and honestly really stellar to watch, with my main critique coming from the advent of hindsight and saying that unprotected chair shots to the head are not cool. Of course, this was pre-CTE. Even still though, this match totally pushed the characters of Rock and Austin to their limits, with finishers being stolen, and Austin whipping out the million dollar dream from his time under Ted DiBiase as the ringmaster. The match came to its unnatural conclusion when Mr. McMahon sided with Steve Austin to help him capture the WWF Championship leading to what might be one of the worst ideas in wrestling histories, but at the time, one of the most shocking things in wrestling history, as the pair shook hands. Shawn Michaels vs. John Cena, WrestleMania 23 The year 2006 is a curious one in the context of wrestling, specifically pertaining to John Cena, as it was early enough in his babyface run where fans were booing him, but even still he was often said to not be great in the ring. However, this match against Michaels was one of the very first shining examples of Cena subverting that narrative. The pair squared off in the main event of the show with Cena entering as WWE Champion in what was a 28 minute 20 second instant classic. Bell to Bell had showcased not only the immense talent of Michaels, but the blossoming of Cena's as well, who really showed up to give the people something to remember that night. This was also another great showing of Cena being put over yet again as the guy. Which may have led to some questionable things down the line, but this match itself is one thing that I will say stands great on its own. Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn vs The Usos, WrestleMania 39, Night 1 Is this yet another case of potential recency bias? Maybe. But even still, it's hard to deny that the culmination of what was in some ways a multi-year long story between Zayn, Owens, and The Usos was anything short of a masterpiece. Headed into the match, we were knee deep in what was at the time the peak of the Bloodline story. Where after unsuccessfully being able to take the world title off of Roman Reigns due to outside interference both times, the pair of Canadians acknowledged their own brotherly bond built over years of blood, sweat, and tears to take on the real life brothers of Jimmy and Jay. Knowing the history of Kevin and Sammy adds to this match tremendously, as well as the history between them and the Bloodline. But even if we were to dismiss all that and focus solely on the in-ring action, I believe this match would still be in consideration as one of the very best main events ever. As, after a grueling and long match, Sami Zayn was the first man to ever kick out of the 1D, and following that managed to muster up three Huluva kicks to Jey Uso to end the match and give us what was genuinely one of the biggest feel-good wins in WrestleMania history. Sasha Banks vs Bianca Belair, WrestleMania 37, Night 1 In the history of WrestleMania, there have only been two women's matches to main event the show, with the first being the triple threat at Mania 35. The reason that one doesn't make the cut and this one does for this video, well, simply put, that match walks so that this one could run. Bianca Belair in 2021 was an up-and-coming babyface seemingly slated to make her mark on the women's division after winning the 2021 Royal Rumble match. Across the ring from her was none other than Sasha Banks, who had been reigning as SmackDown Women's Champion since winning the title from Bayley in November. Banks, being noted as one of, if not the single best bell-to-bell -bell wrestler in the women's division at the time, was sure to show up for her main event clash against the EST. Little did we know the quality of the encounter to come, as the pair put on a tremendous match with the boss trying any and all underhanded tactics to get the better of Bianca. But after a brutal sounding and looking hair whip, Bianca would hoist Banks up for the KOD to secure the SmackDown Women's Championship. Shawn Michaels vs The Undertaker, WrestleMania 26 This match is almost singularly what I credit as to why I wanted to be a wrestler, and truly was the one program that caught my eye in such a way that I needed to watch wrestling in general from here on out. 
The main event of Sean vs. Taker here was so simple. Streak vs. Career. For if Michaels couldn't beat the dead man, then his career was over. And in his own words, he has no career. Literally off the rip, it was already a perfect stipulation to accompany the already anticipated rematch between the two, who put on an unbelievable match the year prior. And while most people don't hold the match quality at quite the same level as their encounter the year prior, I'm personally of the belief that because of the story surrounding it with Michaels losing his mind and everything, because of how much he needed this match against Taker, I'm personally of the belief that because of the story surrounding it as well as the final acts of the match really surmising the character of Shawn Michaels, that this match is maybe just the very best WrestleMania main event ever. But what do you think? Are there better matches that have main evented the show of shows? If so, which? Let me know in the comments down below, and hey ho, while you're headed down that way, be sure to subscribe for more wrestling content, and be sure to leave a like as well if you enjoyed. This year's Mania is almost surely going to be another all-timer, with my eyes personally trained and ready to see Cody Rhodes vs. Roman Reigns too, because, let's face it, that's probably going to be on this list too for me personally. Anyways, I hope you stay safe out there, and that was delightful.